Hello, this is Kyle. Let's not write code today. Uh, let's test code. Uh, testing in JavaScript can be really fun because it can run on so many different environments. And so if you want to test to ensure that your code is running on all those, all those environments, you should test to run, make sure they run on all those environments. Um, so anyways, we have here a basic API that we're going to test. It is a bear class that we are exporting. Um, and it takes a single argument of which type of bear it is, and it has a single method that we can call on it to uh, return a statement that the bear will say. And that can you can pass in uh, what the bear will say, and it will default to gur. So this is what we're going to be testing here. Um, now, there's many test modules out there. Um, the one I really like is called tape. And so I'm going to do npm install tape and I'm going to save this to our dev dependencies. Now tape is really cool because it uses uh, tap or test anything protocol. So there's many other libraries that can read tap output so you can have it output in really cool colors or you know if you have a continuous integration server they can read that. So uh, tape is really nice because it lets us um, output using tap. So now that we have tape installed and saved to our dev dependencies, uh, we're just going to go here and we're going to click and uh, create a file called test.js. And this is where I'll, our tests will, uh, will, will all live. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to uh, require our API here. And so this is just a local file. Um, Index.js is where our, our bare uh, module lives. And so we're going to be testing that, so we should have that. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to create a variable called test, and we're going to assign that to uh, what the, the library tape provides us here. Using test, test takes uh, a couple um, parameters here. The first one is a description of what we want to test. And so the first thing we want to test here on our API is, is this growl method. Uh, let's make sure that this bear can growl uh, appropriately. So say should growl here. And then it takes a second argument, uh, which is a callback. Um, and that callback is passed in this assert. And this lets us assert things. Let's say, is this variable OK? Does it, is it true? Is it false? Is it equal something? Um, you know, all these kinds of different things lets us in the tests, uh, plan out how many tests we have. These are all part of the, the tape library. Um, so now that we have a basic test written, uh, we want to test the actual operation of what the user would do. So we are going to create a bear here. We'll just say new bear. And we're going to see the result of this bear growling here. And so now we're going to use this assert variable uh, that was passed in here. And we're going to call equal on it to see and ensure that this result equals the, the expected uh, result that we want. And so we'll say uh, the any bear uh, says grr. And I believe I did three R's in GUR, that's proper. Yep, I'm pretty sure. Okay, and so then now, as soon as we're all done um, with our assertions and we want this test case here to end, we call assert end. And these are all part of the, the tape library. You can use uh, any library that you want, really, um, to, to test your JavaScript, uh, such as Mocha, Jasmine, QUnit. There's all these other good ones, but this is, uh, this is just the one I prefer. So now we have our test case written, we can run it. So the easy way is just type node test in the name of the file and run it through. Um, and you'll notice here that we have an error. It, it, it's not correct. It says the expected is the any bear says gur. That's what we expected. But the actual result that we got was the undefined bear says gur. And that's because we didn't pass in what type of bear this is. But, you know, this is the function that I want. I don't want to pass in a, a type of bear. So I'm going to modify my API here and make this parameter optional. And so we'll say optionally the any bear. So we're going to go back here. We're going to type node test again. And you'll see that, uh, OK, it should be equal. That assertion has passed. And um, we only have one. So all tests have passed. So this is running tests on our server because we're using uh, Node, or rather IOJS 2.3.1. But we want to test to make sure that this runs in the browser. So there's many ways you can do this. You can bundle your tests and then run them in the browser. But 
Uh, there's a nice module called Zool that's with two U's, Z-U-U-L. Uh, so we're just going to npm install that, not npm Zool it, and save that to our dev, dev dependencies. So now that Zool has finished installing, um, I, we can run it directly here from the terminal, but I want to automate this a little, a little better. So I'm going to go here to my package.json. And in the npm scripts, um, we're going to add a test script. And the first script we want to do is we just want to run node test uh, to run our tests on the server first. And then we're going to do uh, this double and to say after these have ran successfully, we want to run the server test. And so, to, or the, sorry, excuse me, the, the browser test. So we're going to use, uh, we're going to call Zool here that uh, we have installed. Um, and the first, uh, it, it takes a few options, and so the first option we want to pass to it is the UI or the interface we're using. And since we're using tape, we supply tape there. So if you're using Mocha, you can put in Mocha there. If you're using Q in it, you put Q in it. You put in Jasmine, uh, whatever uh, interface you're using there, um, you just tell Zool which one you're using. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're only going to run these locally um, on our machine first, um, and we're going to give it a specific port that we want to run these tests on. Um, and so this will just create a server that we can open up on our browser to run these tests. And then the last thing is we're just going to add these two dashes and then specify where our tests are. Um, and they're just local, you know, right here in the local folder called test. So now when we go to our terminal here and we run npm test, it will first run our server tests and let everything know that everything's passed here. And then we'll give us this URL uh, to open up in a browser here which we'll just copy and paste in here. And it will run the same tests here in our browser and let us know that it's passed. And you'll see here in the console, it even gives the same uh, tap output. So now I opened this up in Chrome, but you are perfectly able to open this same URL up in Firefox or IE or whatever you want if you want to test in a specific browser locally um, to run your tests. You're probably thinking, I don't want to do all that manually. Uh, I just want to have them automatically run each time I push code up to my repo. Um, and so let's go ahead and do that now. So I've created a, a repo here called uh, Bear. And so we're going to set this repo up to um, run our tests anytime we push code to it. Um, so I'm going to be using uh, Travis CI. And so you can go there to travis-ci.org. Um, this is what's actually um, has the virtual machines that tr actually run the test every time you push it. Uh, so go ahead and create an account there. Um, and from here, uh, you can enable um, your repo uh, to, uh, to automate the test, to run the tests when you push. Okay, so now that we have that enabled, we need to go back into our repo here and we need to create a configuration file for Travis. And this will be .travis.yaml here. Um, and so Travis uh, runs Linux servers. Um, and so uh, it, this is only going to be for running our, um, our server-side tests. So um, since our server-side tests are in Node.js, the language we're using here is Node.js. So we just specify language Node.js. And then in the configuration, we can specify um, which versions of Node.js we're going to run. So I want to test on Node.js 12, um, and then also I want to test on IOJS, and we'll just test on whatever the latest version is because they update the version like crazy. Anyway, so doing this will let us run our tests on those two environments and ensure that our code's working on both of those. Um, now, what gets ran, uh, we specify with the script here, and so what I want to run uh, when this whole thing starts up is I'm going to create a new script called CI uh, for continuous integration here. So this will be the script that gets ran when, when everything is ready to go. So let's go ahead and add that CI script here to our package JSON. And we'll say node test. And it will just run the CI. So this NPM test is for me to run things locally when I'm testing. And this will be running uh, my continuous integration server. Um, so now uh, I can push these files up um, by adding them and committing them at Travis. And then I'm going to do uh, git push origin master. Now we can go to our individual repo here, um, shama.bear here, and we can see the status of our build that's running. 
And currently it's running on both of these and installing all the necessary dependencies first. And so once these finish, it'll let us know whether or not it has successfully uh, tested each of the code on in both of these uh, environments. Yeah, and so now that they have finished, you'll see that it has ran our test suite and it shows that it has passed. So that's great that we now know that our tests pass on IOJS and Node 12, but we want to test them in the browser as well. And Travis doesn't test in the browser, it only tests in a, in a Linux uh, virtual machine. So to test on a browser, we're going to use uh, Sauce Labs. Um, so go ahead and create an account to Sauce Labs and, uh, and log in. Um, and then from there, um, what we're going to do is we're going to integrate with Travis. And so uh, they have a docs page here that makes it really easy to, to set this up uh, of integrations with Travis. And so from here, we just enter in our repo name, which will be shama.bear. And this will give us uh, these environments uh, variables. So this is basically like a username and access key. So it says, okay, Travis, you're allowed to run tests on me uh, if you want. So we're gonna go and copy these into our Travis uh, script here. And there's one other thing we're gonna need is this uh, sauce connect um, add-on here to let Zool run through uh, and test through this. And so these are, Sauce Labs are actual uh, virtual machines that, have, that run the actual browsers. So it'll let us automate the browsers on Chrome, on Firefox, on IE, on IE, and you know, IE6 on some crazy old machine, you know, whatever horrors you want to, you know, pit your, uh, your test cases against. It's up to you. So now we need to configure Zool uh, to tell it which browsers we want to run um, on. And so to do that, uh, we're gonna create a new configuration file here called .zool.yaml. Um, and then in here, uh, we can specify options here instead. So instead of passing that in the command line, we can set the UI uh, to tape here. And that makes it a little more convenient that you don't have to type that a bunch of times. Uh, but now we need to uh, configure which browsers. So we can do that with a browser configuration here. And we'll say name, uh, Chrome, uh, and then version. And let's just do the latest. Um, and then why not? Let's do a, another browser. Um, name, Fire, not Firefix, Firefox, version, uh, latest as well. So this will configure Zool to run um, our tests in both of these browsers, just the latest version. So then we can go back here to our package JSON and we no longer need to specify the UI here because Zool will read this configuration file and just pick it right up. And then we're gonna modify our continuous integration script here. So after it runs the server test, we're gonna run Zool here. Uh, we're gonna skip off the local part uh, because by default it will just run on uh, Sauce Labs. And we're just going to specify which uh, tests to run by saying uh, dash dash and uh, the file for our tests. And so now we can go here and we can um, add all those files. We can commit them. Uh, run on sauce. And uh, push them up to our repo to trigger the server. So now that will trigger our uh, Travis build here, which will go off and start running our tests. Uh, now, first thing it's going to do is run through the server test, and then the next thing it's going to run the tests in uh, Chrome and Firefox on Sauce Labs. So, hooray! Our build has passed. Our bear can growl on Chrome, on Firefox, on Node 12, on IOJS, um, and yeah, he's happy. Anyways, I hope this has helped you learn to start testing your JavaScript on the client side and the server side. Um, and if it has, then please share the video and help somebody else learn how to do this. Um, and if you want to see more videos, uh, please subscribe. Thanks again for watching.